Welcome to Excel 2013 Statistical Analysis video number 32. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, last video we talked about discrete probability distributions, and we also talked about calculating expected value and variance, and then taking the square root to get standard deviation. Now, in this example, we have an accounting example. So the accounting department, they've looked at the past records, and they buy in lots of 100. And here's the probability from the past of, on any particular month, purchasing that number of units. So 800, there's a 0.2 probability. 900 units purchased, there's a 0.2. So from this past data are x units demanded and our probability, our frequency distribution with a relative frequency, we can calculate expected mean. And this will be a number we can use in budgeting and planning. Now, from last video, we saw all the x's times all the probability. That means one whole column of x's times another whole column of probabilities. Multiplying and then adding, we use some product. Array 1, that's the first column to multiply, comma to get to the next array, and the second column. This is a type of weighted average or weighted mean. Make sure that both of the dimensions for the two arrays are the same, and Enter. So on average, we ordered from the past 790 units. So we could round that up to 800. Now, we also want to be able to calculate the standard deviation. This is our measure of variation. So equals some product. Oh, last video, we saw how to calculate this longhand, and we extrapolated from our longhand into a single cell formula. If you didn't watch that, i go watch that video to see what this whole formula means. But what do we do? Right inside a formula, we go the whole column x minus our expected value, and then square it. That will be our first array, so I'm going to highlight all of the x's from each individual x i need to subtract the expected value that gives us that gives us our deviations close parentheses and caret 2 that is our first array if we wanted to look we could click on our screen tip array 1 f9 to evaluate we could see that this if we did it longhand, would be our helper column, Control-Z. But we don't want to use a helper column. It's easy enough to do it in a single cell, especially in examples like this where we do not need the individual numbers. We just need the answer, standard deviation, comma, array 2. Well, the formula says once we do all that, we have to multiply it by the whole column of probabilities, close parentheses. Enter. you got to be kidding. That is variance. We want to go ahead and calculate standard deviation, F2. So we come to the front, and after the equal sign, square root. We could also raise it to the 1 half, but I like square root. All right, Enter. And that is our variance. So our expected value, or weighted average, or budgeted Average is 790 with a standard deviation of 170 units. Now we have our number that we're going to use for budgeting. So let's say we order 800. Hey, and then we sell the product for 125. The cost per unit was 60, and we actually sold 500. If we were doing this all cash, we could easily calculate the amount of cash in. That's the revenue, the 500 times the 125. But remember, we went ahead and ordered this 790. And I'm actually going to round it to 800 using M round. Now, M round is not normal rounding, because if I click on this number right here, comma, the multiple, I say round to the nearest whatever. I'm going to put 100. If this number was 749, it would go down to 700. If it's 750 or above, it goes up to 100. That's what M round does. Now, that's the units, F2. And I'm going to multiply it times our cost per unit, Enter. So we could figure out if these are all cash transactions, the cash implication. I could say the cash in minus the cash out. There's a disconnect between how many we sold and how many we ordered. Now, be careful. This is not accrual accounting. Accrual accounting would match 500 units of revenue to 500 units of cost. All right, now we want to go look at another example. This was an accounting example. Let's look at a finance example. 
Now here, we don't have a discrete variable over here, but we do have some probabilities. Now here's the situation. We have a portfolio of stock A, B, and C. And this example here you will see when you get to your finance class. This is a transfer class, so you'll have to take this class and then go take uh, your accounting sequence and finance sequence. Every single textbook you have will see this, and when you get out there, if you're doing finance, you'll do this. Now, these probabilities, some economists estimated the probability of the state of the economy. The chance that there's a boom is 15. The chance that it will be normal is 0.3. And the, and the chance that we're going to have a bust economy is 0.55. So it looks like people are pretty gloomy about the future. Now, these are subjectively created, but that's what we're going to use. Now, in order to calculate the what's called the expected return, we have to take our return for each one of the stocks and multiply it by the probability. Now, these individual probabilities mean that we expect for stock A to get 15% when it's boom, 7% when it's normal, and minus 2% when it's bust. So we can simply use the sum product to multiply these. So equal sum product. Now we've got to be careful here because I want to copy this formula to the side. Notice right now, the first column is going to be relative as I copy it, comma, and then our array 2. Each one of these columns, boom, 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 have to be multiplied by the probabilities for the state of the economy. So I'm going to hit F4 to lock it. And that's it. Expected return, expected value, our average or mean. Click in the last cell, F2, and there we go. So we have our returns. Now notice, once we calculate what's called expected return or weighted average, even though stock B looked great if we were in a boom at 0.25, the average here, given our probabilities, is incredibly small compared to these other two. Now we want to calculate our standard deviation. Standard deviation in finance is a proxy for risk. Hey, we're going to use our formula that we just did in our last example and last video, our first array, where we're going to have to take our particular x's subtract our expected value, close parentheses. I can see I forgot that parentheses, so I'm going to come back here. When I type a parentheses there, it turns orange at the end. That's very helpful. Square it, and that's deviation squared for our first array, comma, and our second array, the probabilities. F4 to lock it. Close parentheses, Control, Enter. That gives us the variance we have to F2 and wrap the square root function around that. Square root of the variance, Control Enter, that gives us our standard deviation. Now I can copy it over. 0 0.06, 0 0.15, 0 0.03. So clearly the most variation comes from stock B. Now in chapter 3, we talked about coefficient of variation. We took standard deviation, divided it by mean, and got standard deviation in terms of one unit of mean. So let's go ahead and calculate that to see a relative measure of variation. So standard deviation divided by our expected return, Control Enter and copy it over. So clearly, the most standard deviation per one unit of mean is stock B. Now in finance, you often see the inverse of standard deviation divided by mean. Hey, mean divided by standard deviation. That says for every one unit of risk, because standard deviation is a proxy for risk, for every one unit of risk, what is our return? So I'm going to do the inverse and take the mean expected return in the numerator divided by our standard deviation, Control Enter, and copy it over. So the biggest one will tell us the most expected return for every one unit of standard deviation, and that is stock C. Hey, so in this video, we saw how to do expected return and standard deviation for a finance example and for an accounting example. Next video, we're going to talk about the amazing binomial distribution and calculate probabilities using the binome.dis function. All right, we'll see you next video.